Okay. Right, because we're doing a photographing grave, instead of doing manual colour fill, we're doing all of the shades of grey between black and white. So we select black and white. Now before you step away from this page, you need to think of the material that you're engraving on and look at your design. Okay? We want as much power as possible to be on the white portions of this image and as least power as possible to be on the dark portions of this image. Okay? Because when you're engraving on acrylic, wherever the laser beam touches it, it goes white. Wherever it uh, touches it with least power, it stays dark. Okay? If you're doing that on wood, you'd have to invert the colours because wherever the laser beam touches wood, it goes dark, because it scorches. Okay? But we're not going to invert it, because we know it's going to work exactly how we want it to. We make sure our pen settings are correct. I'm going to just um, fiddle with these a little bit. Now, do you remember me saying how the power of a manual colour fill engrave is how deep into the material you want to cut or you, how deep into the material you want to engrave. So if you just want to scratch the surface you go lower power, if you want to get your fingernail in there you go deeper power. With a photograph engrave you need to think of the power of the engrave more like exposure on a camera. Okay? Too much power you're going to over blast the image, it's going to be whited out. Too little power you're going to underpower it, it's almost like it's an underexposed image. You're not going to see anything. There is no guidelines for this. This is all experimentation and balancing act. Okay. So, uh, advanced relative, yes, we're happy. Pa paper size, same as before. So, raster. This is the new tab that has appeared as soon as we selected black and white. Now, the only thing you care about here is the half tone. Okay? That's dithering or aero diffusion. Now, dithering is a dot matrix printer. It's a, it's a kid with a compass, it's the old newspaper print, okay? Aerodiffusion was described to me as closer to how the human eye perceives an image. I found that wasn't very helpful, okay? In reality, there's still dots, but they're a lot softer, a lot smoother, a lot tighter together, and a lot more often, okay? In practical terms, if the image is a good focus, high quality image with hair, you'd go with aerodiffusion, because you're going to get a better image out of that one. Everything else you'd go with dithering, because dithering works every single time. But you'll always see the dots. Okay. So if we go OK and OK, it's going to take a little bit longer to send the information across, because it's a photograph, there's more data to send across. If we come back to the laser now, we'll see. We'll see, it hasn't arrived yet. Okay, something's gone wrong there. I'm going to send it again. Let's go and quick double check. 